farm update. Cassie's hungry. Cassie, how hungry are you? I'm gonna go grab the girls their grain bucket. I've been continuing to feed the girls grain four times daily. We do two scoops per serving. I've been doing this for maybe a week and a half now. Miller's harness fell off, which is another fun side quest to let you know about. Hi girls. Oh no. As far as body condition goes, I feel like Nala and Rouge look just about the same as they usually do. Delilah is crossed with a fleck V, so she, she should look a little bit more filled out. The biggest change I've actually noticed is in my Holstein Cassie here. I took a video a while back, Nala when the temperatures were freezing about 18 degrees and in that video i said that i started feeding the girls corn just give them the extra protein boost heat up the room in a little bit in that video i said that cassie's body condition improved and so did snowdrops Whew. right into your eyes Something that I've heard on other regenerative cattle farmers' pages is the idea that through selective breeding, when we started going more towards keeping our cattle in feedlots, you wanted to select the animals that gained more body mass on grain because if the cattle weren't on pasture, it's not very beneficial to keep breeding stock that naturally maintained body condition off of grass. A large intake in grain produces more lactic acid in the cows. With grain, dairy cattle become more productive as far as milk goes. So when I think about a cow like Cassie, I would assume a lot of Holsteins are selectively bred to do better on grain. And that's where my assumption came in that Cassie must have needed more corn. But as time progressed, I noticed there was a lot more corn in their manure, which tells me they're not actually absorbing the corn. Maybe temporarily the protein increase was a benefit to her, but it wasn't long lasting. They stopped chewing cud as much. Snowdrop even started losing her appetite. As y'all know, I've been reading a book called Organic Cow Care, and the book often talks about slugging the cow, heifer, your cattle's rumen with grain isn't very beneficial for them, hence why I am dividing up their grain into smaller portions. The fact that the girls were having grain left over in their manure tells me their digestion needs to be slowed down. Since the freezing temperatures, we did move back to solely barley. As I mentioned before, Snowdrop started to act a little bit differently as she was consuming more corn and the additional grain ended up not exactly being totally beneficial. It was a very short-term fix. Anyways, <laughs> what was I saying again? Oh yeah, grain. What was happening in the winter time is I increased their amount of grain, which was filling them up just fine. They felt full after eating the amount of grain that I was giving them. That was the corn and the barley. The problem is, is they stopped eating the hay. 
Hay is important for your cattle's diet because it has fiber, it slows down the digestive system, and that process of slowing down is actually going to allow them to absorb the nutrients that they are receiving. I believe when I upped the corn, it was beneficial in a sense that they were receiving a greater intake of corn, but they started metabolizing it too quick. They were getting full, they stopped eating hay. As I have reduced the portion of feed that they get, but I do feed them more frequently, I notice that the next thing they do is they eat hay. I'm giving them just enough barley to encourage their appetite, but it's leaving them still a little bit hungry. And that's when they go to the hay feeder. Something I do wanna try out is possibly doing a corn and barley mix in the same way that I'm feeding the barley right now because the barley is a great carb, the hay is a great fiber, and I think the corn would add that protein that the hay could possibly be lacking. Just a thought, but I perceive to be what was going on with Snowdrop when she, she stopped chewing cud, she stopped eating. I think she was experiencing a small amount of rumen acidosis. Or Snowdrop is already a thinner heifer than the rest of the girls. And having that extra protein just started burning through her. And when cattle have a bunch of fermentable starches in their stomach, it's starting to lower the pH of their rumen. And unfortunately that kills off a lot of the beneficial stomach bugs within their microbiome. I mentioned before that when it came to corn, Cassie's body condition improved. And again, that was temporary. We noticed a huge improvement in Cassie's body condition. And I think this is just a start to the benefits that I'm gonna see from switching their feedings up a little bit. Snowdrop has been our least healthy heifer out of all of them. Some reasons I say that is because she typically has ruffled up fur, she has been a little bit more lean, and her fur typically was very dull. It wasn't sleek and shiny like the other girls. And since I have changed the way that we're feeding grain, I've actually noticed like a, a gloss in her coat. She's been looking a lot more clean. As far as body conditions, she still remains a little bit more thin. Her breed is a Dutch belted Jersey cross. Some of these improvements could be due to the fact that they have a cow yard and we are now getting more sun. The book in reference also connected gut microbiome to hoof health. If a cow is constantly in the beginning state of rumen acidosis, you're not aware that there's a problem, may see redness along their hooves. Once I read it in the book, I noticed it in Cassie and Delilah. That was a, a symptom that I was unaware of that their gut microbiome is off. As I've been going along in this process, that is also something that has gone away. That's one sign that I can actually tell that their gut microbiome is improving. There's another fun thing that I learned from the book that you can do to see if your cattle's microbiome is in check, and that is counting the amount of chews as they are chewing cud before they swallow it and regurgitate it back up. That's what they do when they chew cud. You want them to be upwards of 60 chews in between swallowing their cud back up. Four out of five are now at about 75 chews per regurgitation. So here's the back of Delilah's hoof. There's still a little bit of pink over here a little bit of pink on her hoof right here, this line. However, even though it is still noticeable, it is not nearly as bright as it was four days ago. Here's uh, Cassie's feet. Hers is nearly gone. There's still a little bit of pink, Cassie, in between her toes. Oh, that's, that's my hair. It'll be more obvious on a cow with white hooves in comparison to one with black hooves. And this is Snowdrop for reference. Her coat has not been this shiny. And her furs just looked a lot more put together. Ultimately, when you overload your cattle's digestive system with grain, even if there are not dramatic 
symptoms, your cattle may be experiencing acute rumen acidosis. Whether you are a human or cattle, anything that disrupts your gut microbiome are going to be unwell. You are reducing the pH level, creating a more acidic environment. The acidity allows pathogens to leak through the rumen walls and this can disrupt circulation, which is why the hooves of cattle are affected by rumen acidosis. All right, guys, now let's talk about Miller. Miller's harness came off, which has made me have to expedite the process of handling him a lot sooner. I don't want that harness hanging off because I don't want him to get stuck on anything and hurt himself. I was able to get a rope halter around his neck, but I wasn't able to successfully get it around his nose. And he's scared of me. I don't want to make the same mistake I made with Rouge, and that's where I tried to force halter training really strong in the beginning because it worked with my younger calves and it worked with Nala. When you have cattle with already a nervous temperament, I believe it's a lot more important to focus on some sort of trust. I do not think there is a one size fits all method for all cattle, especially if you want to do stuff like halter train them. They all have their own personalities and what I've found is that they all have responded differently to different things I'm trying. It's just like having children. When you have a large amount of animals, you stop looking at them like individuals. What I've been doing to try to get them more comfortable with me is I've been bringing out the grain bucket. Something I would like to do is maybe bucket train him because I'm not super set on the idea of requiring him to be halter trained, but I do need some sort of method to manage him. So I'm gonna set my camera up and I'll show you kind of what I've been doing. Miller is scared of the rope halter. I've just been carrying it as I've been feeding them their grain. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go stand there next to it. I've been putting the halter into the bucket just so they see it and they can sniff it and it's not something scary. doing is walking auto on a halter in front of Miller. This is something that has worked with Rouge and Nala. This is something that I may do while training dogs is um, desensitizing. They are a prey animal, so they may see this as a threat. From my perspective, I want to demonstrate to them that I'm not a threat. This isn't a threat because I don't want to engage their their instincts. <laughs> Building trust with an animal takes time, no matter what kind of animal it is. There is, of course, a lot of risk involved with working with a bull. I am no expert, but I do have a bull and I do need to get this harness off of him. So I may have to do my best to fast track this when my husband gets home. Hopefully there's still daylight. Figure out how to get his halter off safely. We'll go from there. Thank you for watching.